everybody and welcome to today's video you see lots of smiles on my face because I am just so utterly blown away so blown away at last week's video you know when you turn that camera on you just never know what's gonna happen and I'm gonna tell you a little bit what took place last Sunday and I'll tell you a little bit what has transpired since then so I uploaded the video and I waited for it to become live and I knew that my regular people who watch all of my videos would be on it and so I started hearting them and commenting them but I thought you know what I thought you know what it was nighttime and it was getting close to my bedtime I thought well I am just going to turn the computer off because I didn't know what would happen with that video and I really didn't want to produce more anxiety talking about anxiety so I turned the video off went to bed and I woke up in the morning with 12,000 views 12,000 views and hundreds of beautiful kind loving comments all but one all but one and it was just so amazing and so beautiful and I want to thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart because I was literally blown away. I was. I didn't think people would watch the video. I also didn't think it would have the response that it did. And the response it had was, I'm not alone. Now I knew I wasn't alone with having anxiety, but I didn't realize how many of my readers have anxiety as well. So that brings us to another point in my videos. And I thought to myself, okay, over the years, I talked about anxiety and I talked about panic attacks. But whenever I talked about them, it was in periods of my life when I didn't have them. Because, well, it's easy to talk about things when you think you overcome them, or it's easy to talk about things when you're not dealing with them. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I talk about panic and anxiety in the trenches of having it? Now there's a thought, <laughs> because anxiety, talking about anxiety can produce anxiety, but it can also help us as well. Now I know for me, when I was really deep in anxiety, really bad, just hearing somebody else talking about it did affect me in a way, but yet it did really help me in a way as well. So I'm just going to share my journey of anxiety with all of you. You know. I wanted to use the term and I don't even know what term to use it. I was going to say anxiety, the hidden sickness or the hidden disease because so many of us are embarrassed to talk about it. We talk about heart disease. We talk about diabetes. We talk about all kinds of ailments in our life. But when it comes to anxiety and it comes to depression, I've never had depression in my life but I had severe, and I have severe anxiety and panic attacks. Yes, that can lead to depression because when you got them anxiety attacks, it's very depressing. But why is it hidden? Because so many stereotypes. I'm gonna talk about those stereotypes in my week, vi my week videos. There's a lot of things that are being different with me. There are so many things. I wanna thank you that we're all nurses that were on my channel. I am. I am not eating as much. I'm working on my diet. I'm outside more. I'm turning that internet button off. I'm really watching and focusing on what I'm entertaining my mind with. And I'm really focusing on, once again, not being so busy. You know, we glorify the busyness in our lives, but we should really glorify the unbusiness, the quietness of our life. And why do we hide issues like anxiety and panic disorder? Well, because so many times people will say us, the same with fibromyalgia, excuse me if I don't pronounce it right, I do have a way of pronouncing my words different. That is just me, you know, I, I can't help it. So. So if I don't pronounce words correctly, I know I'm not pronouncing them correctly, but everybody understands. I think it's because so many times people who don't know what it is, they'll just say, oh, well, 
get it out of your head it's all in your head or or stop doing this and stop doing that it's all in your head just get over it but what they don't realize is it is an illness it is something that affects us and sometimes it's hard to get over things and sometimes you can't you know we'll get a panic attack in the middle of the night we don't know why we're getting a panic attack sometimes it could be a chemical something we ate it could be stresses that we don't know about it could be many many things many things I am a woman at a certain age and yes that plays a big part of it my mother passed away at age 21 I don't know how my mother react would have we reacted to menopause that's another thing we don't talk about we're gonna talk about that as well because simply it should be addressed and should be talked about um, I know I have men that watch my channel, but you know men go through something too at a certain age of their life. Men go through a certain change as well, and it's part of life, and we have to learn to work with it. But anxiety for me is doing too much or worrying too much. Now I will tell you a little bit how my anxiety started. At the age of 29 is when I got my first anxiety attack, and that's because I had my wisdom teeth pulled and when I had my wisdom teeth pulled they gave me a drug called hydrocodone or hydrocodone hydrocodone something like that well I was allergic to it it was the same class drug they gave my birth mother which had a reaction with her and of course she passed away from other complications but I was allergic to this and what happened is it, it raised my my blood pressure to dangerously high levels but panic attacks started happening then and that was medically induced I think because I never had anything like it before that well what happens with panic attacks are once you get them you tend to get them and the more often you get them the more often it is hard to get rid of them so I was getting panic attacks three four times a day every day and I went to countless heart doctors and countless doctors and they all said you know everything is fine you know it's panicked attacks and so for me it started with that and then they just kept going because I had produced a fear of taking pills because I got it from taking these pills so <laughs> whenever if I took an aspirin or something like that I'd get a panic attack I'm on no medication whatsoever and that's just simply because I'm very healthy yes I am overweight <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm not gonna like tell you that I'm not overweight but my blood sugars my blood pressure is great but I am overweight and I am reaching an age now where I have to worry about my health a little more because when you go through menopause your estrogen is what helps keeps things going and that it dips and changes and so heart disease can become really rampant when you become older but for me it was stress and it was worrying about things I shouldn't worry about and I knew it I mean I knew I was stressing and I was getting more and more stressed out and I knew when the panic attack started I realized what it was and I knew you have to stop stressing but how do you do that okay so how do you do that how do you just say Oh, I'm not gonna stress no more oh I'm not gonna do this oh I'm not gonna do that anymore and because of my faith I gave it to the Lord and when I mean giving it to the Lord that doesn't mean I miraculously all of a sudden stopped okay I didn't like all of a sudden like oh it's you know it stopped but it was a gradual and so I stopped feeding my mind with things so I'll give you an example for me when I would start getting these thoughts in my head and they're different thoughts they're thoughts of inadequacy um, low self-esteem their thoughts of I'm not worth it you know I'm not worth it these are just my personal thoughts now when your mind plays those I just change my whole direction I change where I'm at I get up I move around I go outside I change my whole thought process and that changes how you feel your brain can only think of one thing so your brain can't think of two things at one time and so you have to change your your point of view and your thought 
I sat in front of the computer way too much. Even on my own channel, I sat. And everybody who has issues in life then asks for prayer. I do pray for everyone and I continue to do that. But a lot of times when I know I'm really busy or I'm really tired, I won't look at comments at night. I will wait until the morning and then I will heart people's comments and then I will pray for them. Because even positive things, if it's so much of it, it, it can get overwhelming. And so I pray for people in the morning when I'm fresh and anew. And that way I'm able to focus more on people and I can pray for them in a better and a, and a stronger way than when I'm tired and I'm mentally exhausted. Because my goal in life is to pray for people and to be there for people. I just love people. I love, I love people. And I think what blew me away with last week's video more than anything in this world was all the people, hundreds, who said, oh, I know about anxiety. I know about panic attacks. I know about vertigo. I know about all these things. Oh, I'm dealing with it now, or I dealt with it last week, or I could not believe the amount of people that totally understood, like totally understood. So, I'm gonna be more vulnerable. And in my one day a week videos, I'm going to share my anxiety attacks. <laughs> I was always one up for a challenge. This is gonna be a big challenge for me. And yes, I will let you know if it's a video where I'm actually having a panic attack or anxiety. And I will turn the camera on and show you how I work through it. You know, showing our weaknesses, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know what I'm thinking? Anxiety and panic attacks is a negative power. And the more you allow that negative power, the more it rules over your life. You know, for me, my anxiety and panic was, what happens if I go away and I get one? Well, you know what happens, then you don't go away, right? And then it happens, what happens if I eat this? Am I gonna get one? Well, you know what happens, you don't eat it then. And slowly your wall gets tighter and tighter and tighter until you have anxiety attacks no matter what you do. So the, the anxiety attacks came back. Now I've only had a few. It's not every day and it's not all day and I'm able to talk about it, but maybe God was telling me in my ear, you know what, Tessie, why don't you just be real and tell them what it's like, show them what it's like. And they're like, oh, you're kidding me. That's about stepping out as far out of my comfort zone as I'm ever gonna do. <laughs> and not try so hard, and I'm not. I'm not trying so hard. I think you can tell. <laughs> There's lots of subtle ways you can tell. I'm just, I don't know, maybe I just reached a threshold in my life where I'm just not trying so much.